Good morning. Um, I'm really thankful that you are here. Um, we are there. How many of you bought something online this year? Please raise your hands. How many of you brought, bought something online this month? This week? This morning? <laughs> now, show of hands, how many of you bought something online 10 years ago? Early adopters, I like you. <laughs> the world has changed. Um, commerce has changed. Um, consumer behavior has changed dramatically. And it has a great deal of convenience for us, but impacts for the environment. We used to go to the shopping mall. We used to go to the goods, and now the goods come to us, and we've all heard of the retail apocalypse and how it's changing commerce. Um, the goods come to us, though. They come to us at the lowest price, the largest selection, um, and convenient. We have expected now those things. We want what we want. We want it tomorrow. We want to be able to pick from a broad selection. Um, and we want it on our doorstep at the lowest cost. You have that power over modern commerce to change retailers' behavior. And we've seen this. Uh, by evidence of hands here, um, your influence is very, very strong. Now, those boxes of goods move through supply chain systems. Those supply chain systems were originally evolved for parcel post. And parcel post was when grandma wanted to send you cookies at Christmas time, um, not for you to get your groceries every other day. So to survive these systems, because they can be a little violent, they have to put your goods in a cardboard box and fill it full of air and dunnage, it's called, to protect it. How many of you have opened up a cardboard box, looked inside, and, and you've ordered something this big in a box that comes this big? Can I see your hands? So that is only so they can survive traditional conveyor-based parcel sortation systems. Now, those parcel post systems evolved off of actually check clearing houses where everything would go to one central point, they would be sorted and then redistributed. So that hub and spoke model is what's evolved in all uh, parcel post courier companies. Um, and it made sense when there was very few parcels, but doesn't make sense now. Um, Statista reports that in 2018, Canadians spent $50 billion online, and they predict that it's gonna grow by $10 billion in the next four years. This isn't going away, but this system that we use doesn't support itself over the long term. About half of the things you order because you want it tomorrow came from someplace far away on a plane. Think about all that airspace in that empty box. Think about the carbon footprint of what you've just ordered. Not only the box, but there's an environmental um, cost to convenience. And, uh, We'd like to lessen that. So FedEx reports that they move 14 million packages per day. Now that's one carrier on one day. So FedEx, if you do the math, is moving about 5 billion packages each and every year. And over half of them by air. So what's changed? When we went to the mall, the t-shirts we would buy would come in a box of probably 30. And someone there would take them, put them on the shelf, we would go pick them off the shelf, put them, they'd get them in a paper bag and we'd take them home. Now what's changed is those same 30 shirts now come in one box but get distributed in 30 more boxes. Once again, just to survive the sortation systems of parcel post technology. So this is what we end up with. Uh, China's national sword policy now has changed to not start to recycle um, cardboard produced in North America. We used to ship all of our old cardboard um, over to Asian countries for recycling because there is really no infrastructure to manage the pure volume of cardboard boxes produced through modern commerce. So what are we doing with it now? We can look at ourselves and say, hey, we recycle. So we can absolve ourselves on some responsibility, but understand just because it goes in a blue bin 
doesn't mean it actually doesn't end up in a landfill. When we have no place to put that cardboard, recycling companies now are starting to move them into landfills. Um, so we got to think about this differently. And uh, that's what we did at Atabotics. We wanted to try to find a solution um, to this problem and others. So I took some inspiration from a gentleman named Dr. Wal Walter Chinkel. Um, he's standing next to an aluminum casting of a leaf cutter ant colony. And in seeing this, this little documentary piece that I saw online, um, I was looking for a solution that was ideal for robots and not for people when it came to modern supply chain fulfillment. Uh, we are two-dimensional. You probably notice I'm, I'm, I'm pacing on the stage because we live in a plane. We only move in two dimensions, but ants exist in three. Ants are one of the most uh, successful natural systems on the planet. <clears throat> Um, going back to the picnic idea, we don't notice they're there. But if you added up all the biomass of ants on the planet, so every single ant on one side of the scale, every single human being on the other side of the scale, ants would weigh more than all the humans on the planet. So, but we don't realize they're there. Um, and the creepy part, too, is termites are about two and a half times as many as ants. So I really hope we never upset them. Um, let's just hope they stay in the ground where we don't notice them. We have scarred the planet being a two-dimensional species. We need rows and aisles and roads and pathways to get everywhere. Um, ants are such an efficient user of space, even in an ecosystem, that they distribute themselves evenly through that ecosystem, not to overwhelm any one part of it. So taking inspiration from these successful natural systems, we thought about supply chain. So we built a system derived from the way ants build their colonies. And in order to do that, we had to create the world's first 3D robotic shuttle. So not only do we do a better job of storing goods that you buy online, but because our ants um, are able to move these goods and build the order for you for commerce, we have no need for conveyor-based sortation systems. All of our technology is based off of this unit and this technology. So we're trying to solve the problem of the box with a bigger box. Um, <laughs> The idea is that we can create a multinodal supply chain. We can create a distributed network of fulfillment centers and move the goods not from a central hub, but distributed throughout the, uh, the ecosystem to better balance the resources and bring them to closer to you, the consumer. Now, in this ecosystem, we never use parcel-based sortation technology, which means we never have to use a cardboard box. So what we're attempting to do is lessen the last mile cost, get rid of 80% of air cargo, bring it to you within a two hour to an eight hour time horizon. We're gonna lower the cost for the retailers so we can make e-commerce profitable for them. We're gonna reduce the environmental impact um, of modern commerce while providing a higher level of service. But in order to do that, we're doing, trying to do our part by developing the technology needed to fulfill a modern commerce in this modern world. But I need you to do your part. I need you to start asking your retailers that you buy online from what you should do with the box they sent to you. We need them to start thinking differently, and you have all the power. You've already got broader selection lower pricing, next day, same day delivery. Now I want you to start asking them not for just those services, I need you to start asking them for some guidance and some new thinking about what you should do with the box when you're done. Thank you. <laughs>